So last year, Take-Two CEO Strauss Selnick received $42.1 million in compensation, which is more than two and a half times the previous year's amount, according to this GamesIndustry.biz article. I tried to imagine how I'd spend $42 million, but after buying a Koenigsegg CC850 for $3.65 million, a Lamborghini Huracan Performante for $281,000, a Subaru Impreza 22B STI for $144,000, and a C7 Corvette for $60,000, I still have like $38 million left over. Huh. Reporting from Kotaku also shows Take-Two's top two executives were paid over $70 million in the last year, a doubling in pay for these two head executives of a company that began cutting jobs in March of this year. Zelnick stated these cuts have mostly been limited to quote, corporate operations and label publishing, and development team cuts have been quote, minimal. However, it is still unknown exactly how many staff, and how many developers for that matter, have actually gotten the axe this year. Now last year, Zelnick's contract was renewed till 2029, and a portion of this contract sticks out to me about performance-based rewards. This section states that 25% of the restricted stock unit reward will be based on an operational performance metric relating to recurrent customer spending during the applicable performance period. This directly ties the CEO's compensation to the amount of microtransactions they can shove down your throats in games you've already paid for. And he's willing to outright tell you that's his goal. Reporting from GameSpot shows that in a recent earnings report, Zelnick stated in relation to the firm's mobile portfolio, quote, We are fielding a game for 100% of the audience and monetizing 10% or so, perhaps a bit more, often a bit less. And it's our view that we ought to be monetizing 100% of the audience. That's right. His goal is to monetize 100% of us. Please, friends, do not let Strauss monetize you. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. Especially with how terrible Take-Two's mobile offerings are. According to reporting from Axios, this contract represented an increase in how much recurrent consumer spending would impact the CEO's compensation, which I think begins to explain why we've seen GTA Online take such a dive in quality recently. The recent update fiasco in which almost 200 vehicles, many of them beloved classics, were taken out of the game to be sold back to us pretty much tracks with the idea that they are going to try everything they can to milk you for recurrent consumer spending. Additionally, their decision to nerf the KO heist this year, making it slower for single players to grind the heist, and the fact that guards now see through walls on that heist, I'm not even sure if that's a bug or if they just wanted to make it harder. They clearly just want you to buy your shark cards now, for the fear of missing out on a limited time availability item they're re-releasing to us, or maybe just cough up cash monthly for their trash value GTA Plus service. They don't care how much you spent on the game originally, they're gonna put it on Game Pass and try to get as many new spenders into their pachinko parlor so Strauss can grift off each new purchase. GTA Online is in a dire state. We're still waiting for the next-gen update for GTA Online on PC, and anyone who plays retail on PC can tell you the game is just as buggy, unoptimized, and full of hackers as ever. I mean, the in-game chat hasn't worked for months at this point. Rockstar, please fix. Some of these complaints are more for the developers of the game, sure, but I feel like most of the worst issues with GTA Online at this point are due to decisions from the leadership that have left us with this stripped-down, money-grubbing version of the game. Take-Two also decided to end off this amazing year by releasing a port of a 13-year-old game for $50. Because as Strauss said, that's just what we believe is the commercially accurate price for it. The company's recent acquisition of the beloved 5M mod framework team is also raising concern in the community. Can't really say what they're intending to do with that at this point, but I strongly doubt it's a good thing for the future of a free and unrestricted 5M. The company's stock price has been steadily growing throughout 2023 because, as we know, the market responds positively when a CEO takes a productive company and makes it as lean and profitable as possible through implementing all kinds of devious marketing and management strategies. The shareholders get paid, top executives get exorbitant bonuses, the employees lose their jobs, and the games get worse. Great leadership, Strauss. The company's other offerings, like sports games, have been complete cash grabs for years but it really feels like Take-Two's mainline titles are taking a dive in quality. I guess we'll see for sure when GTA 6 probably releases next year. Let me know if you agree with my admittedly pessimistic take in the comments, and please hit like if you enjoyed. All the articles and everything I talked about is linked in the description if you want to know more. I'm on the road to 100, so you hitting the subscribe button would also mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching and have a great day. I could, I could carry you in my bed if you want. Much appreciated. I don't have straight line speed. I'm covering the inside. That's cool. I'll just go around the outside. Ah!
<laughs> Not a very nimble vehicle. This reminds this me of like, the... uh... Smuggler's Run, honestly. That's what this reminds me of. 